If anything kills over 10 million people in the next few decades, it's most likely to be a highly infectious virus rather than a war. Coronavirus officially hitting the U.S. Here's what we know. Uh, France's health minister has confirmed that two cases have been identified. So we found out about 90 minutes ago that there are two cases of the same family of the coronavirus in the U.K. India has detected its first case of the deadly coronavirus. One case has now been reported in Brazil, the first in South America. Now, Pakistan on Wednesday confirmed its first two cases of COVID-19. Philippines has its first confirmed case. Well, several other European nations, including Austria, Croatia and Switzerland, have also announced cases, all appear to be linked to this growing outbreak we're seeing in northern Italy, around the city of Milan. Some people I've spoken to have not left their room for 24 hours now. They're frustrated, they're stressed and they're tired. And this is really the, the eye of the cyclone. A nightmare. It's been three weeks that I didn't see anyone because we are not allowed to go out. We can do it just for some necessities. And to do this, we have a kind of document. Basically, we have to say who we are, where we live, if we are moving from a city to another, and we have to cross one of the only four reasons to go out, so to buy food, to work. In general, the situation is getting worse in these two weeks because a lot of people are getting sick and it's, it's hard also for us to stay at home uh, and to keep our lifestyle. Even if, for example, universities are doing lessons online, some people are graduating online too, or they're doing exams, or people are working at home. I'm shaking hands continuously. I was at a, I was at a hospital the other night where I think there were, a few, there were actually a few coronavirus uh, patients and I shook hands with everybody. Prime Minister Boris Johnson has been admitted to hospital 10 days after testing positive for the coronavirus. I'm in the UK right now, but I'm originally from Helsinki, Finland. Uh, the reason I came here is to audition for some drama schools, but right now they have cancelled or moved online. So I'm now in the process of wondering if it's better for me to fly home. But here the situation is calm. I'm in barns right now. Some of the shops are emptied out. You really see what a lot of people are like when they're scared. You know, they're just trying to look out for the families, but at the same time, they're not thinking rationally. They're like taking and hoarding loads of food that they will probably never eat. I never thought I'd see it in my life, but there is literally such a demand for toilet paper. Literally, we, we put out like, say, 200 pieces of toilet paper on the shop floor. Within like two minutes, it's all gone. People are literally running for it. We've had to get the police into our store because people are fighting over toilet paper. Boris Johnson, the Prime Minister, decided to shut down all pubs, clubs, cafes, restaurants, things like the NHS, which is our hospitals, emergency service workers, carers, supermarket people, which is where I work at the minute. That is jobs that are going to stay open. Of course, people still need to eat, they need to get food. With all these jobs shut in, so many people have lost their work who are self-employed. The government say they're going to pay everyone's wages still, but whether they do, that's a different story. I have no job, more or less. I have no source of income at all anymore. Because I'm part-time work, I don't actually get any compensation pay because I'm te all of us are on zero-hour contracts. University-wise, all my university stuff has been online. It's all online lectures, online assessments and stuff like that. It's really mental. All the shops is like sort of what you're seeing online. They're, they're completely empty with bread and pasta, milk, uh, and essential toilet roll, and essential things like that. I'm not visiting grannies and grandas uh, because I go to uni. I work in a bar and I play a lot of sport, so I'm in contact with 
loads of people so nobody's visiting any of our older grand and granda previously i would have had like care and responsibilities for that but that's all being passed around the family now so normally my shift i would finish at half 11 at night and actually last night i didn't finish till after two in the morning my daily routine is going to work coming home scrubbing my body to make sure that I'm not bringing anything into the house to infect anyone. So at the start, it was very chaotic. It was quite frightening. I don't use the tube anymore. I don't use buses anymore. You have to be patient and you have to be smart about this and to stay home, slow this thing down. I think there actually might be a few positive outcomes. I feel that Everyone is going to realise how lucky we are and how much we all love our friends and family and how we can't wait to see everyone again. It's a tough time right now, but we need to just be there for each other and get through it. In a strange way and a weird way, this brings people together and they realise that in a crisis like this, you can only get through it if you get through it with everyone else. is that I was supposed to be going for a marketing internship to California, San Diego. It seems that my internship will be cancelled because of this coronavirus situation. I have paid a bit over 1,000 euros in total of my whole visa process. I will get only like 50% back because half of the costs are non-refundable. So that's just great for a student like me. And also, I am currently paying rent for an apartment in California, which I cannot go to. I don't know what I'm gonna do with my summer if my internship will be cancelled because most of the firms here in Finland are not recruiting anyone right now. This is the closest I am getting to a palm tree this spring. The first case of the deadly Chinese coronavirus making its way to the U.S., a Washington state man testing positive for the deadly virus. This is certainly not a moment for panic or high anxiety. It is a moment for vigilance. I can't take public transportation like I normally would to get to work. But sadly, that won't even matter after today because today is the last day that I'm allowed to work. Um, my job is shutting down. Breaking news for our viewers in the West. A stunning report just out. It shows a record shattering 6.6 .6 million Americans filed for unemployment benefits last week. That is double last week's record report. I was an au pair and I looked after three kids and I worked for two doctors. Um, so due to this coronavirus, I didn't feel safe um, living with doctors. I left the family and I drove down to North Carolina with my girlfriend. It took us um, two days to get down and we didn't want to stop in New York because they have an intense number of cases. We're trying super hard to make everything work, but it's hard. I'm trying to get to the airport. Flights keep getting canceled. I've got a flight for Saturday night and it's it's confusing because everyone's telling us different things. Um, the UK government, when I phoned, told me that if I can stay here, to stay here. But the US government told me if I can go, to go. We have very little problem in this country at this moment. Well, we pretty much shut it down coming in from China. We're going to see what happens, but we did shut it down, yes. Looks like by April, you know, in theory, when it gets a little warmer, it miraculously goes away. I hope that's true. And I think the numbers are going to get progressively better as we go along. We have it very much under control in this country. Because of all we've done, the risk to the American people remains very low. It's going to disappear. One day, it's like a miracle. It will disappear. You know, it could get worse before it gets better. It could maybe go away. We'll see what happens. Nobody really knows. No, I'm not concerned at all. No, I'm not. It will go away. Just stay calm. It will go away. To keep new cases from entering our shores, 
We will be suspending all travel from Europe to the United States for the next 30 days. This is the most aggressive and comprehensive effort to confront a foreign virus in modern history. Yeah, no, I don't take responsibility at all. It's all over the world. It's incredible what's happened in such a short period of time. And I've always known this is a this is a real this is a pandemic. everywhere in the world, but Moraga is part of the Bay Area, and the Bay Area just issued this thing called shelter in place. So basically, almost a full lockdown. What we're being advised to do is just to stay home. However, they did say that it's fine to go out on hikes and runs and stuff and try to get out to keep your, your mental health, um, to keep yourself healthy, I guess. We don't have any jobs and no source of income, even though we also have to pay our bills, have to pay our rent. And yeah, we're really just coping by finding things to do at home and um, watching movies together, make cookies, um, fun things. But we still have to do our homework and live our lives. I'm lucky that I live in this amazing place with scenery like this so I can keep working out. My family's back home in Finland and I don't get to see them, so it's hard, but just FaceTiming and do my classes online and just trying to live life. I mean, in times like this, you really, we really have to do everything to protect, protect the people around us. In fact, if there's one positive thing that can come out of the Ebola epidemic, it's that it can serve as a early warning, a wake-up call to get ready. If we start now, we can be ready for the next epidemic.